This Warmaster Battle Report is a two-player game featuring large armies. For this game, the players met at Warhammer World in Nottingham, England. This is the international headquarters of Games Workshop and the birthplace of Warmaster. The first army will be 4,000 points of Tomb Kings. The army includes a core of light infantry and archers, with a large strike force of chariots and cavalry, a heavy artillery brigade, some monsters, some flyers and seven wizards. The second army is 4,000 points of Kislev. The Kislev army features masses of horse archers with some heavy cavalry support. There is also a strong corps of light infantry and archers supported by mercenary ogres, red guard handgunners and bears. There are also two war wagons, mobile bastions for the battlefield. The undead deploy with their cavalry and infantry brigades interspersed. The army employs a refused flank deployment on their left, with the artillery covering the open ground in the centre. Monsters are mixed in to support the cavalry brigades, with the characters taking up equidistant positions to issue commands. The undead plan will be to strike forward quickly and eliminate the enemy cavalry to gain the mobility advantage. The Kislevites deploy their missile infantry on the central hill. On their right flank they deploy their light cavalry, with the war wagons, bears and heavy cavalry in support. The Kislevites left flank is held only with light cavalry. The Kislevites have opted for a broad line deployment. The infantry can hold a defended position on the central hill and oversee the main battlefield. The main Kislevite strength is on their right flank where there is another open avenue of attack. If the Kislevites can lure the undead cavalry out of support range of their infantry, they can spring a trap and remove the enemy's punch. The undead move first and waste no time in moving two cavalry brigades up on their left flank. Undead characters and monsters move up to support the undead cavalry attack on their left. In the centre, chariots and cavalry advance to cover the open ground with artillery in support. The undead infantry remains in defended positions this turn. Kislev responds with a light cavalry advance on their left flank. On their right, Kislev advances light cavalry, bears and war wagons, which enter Largard formation. In the centre, infantry and heavy cavalry take up defensive positions, with a forlorn hope of archers moving forwards to bait the enemy cavalry. The undead respond with a cautious cavalry advance in the centre, but on their left, the undead successfully order a massed charge into the waiting Kislevite unit. Bears and horse archers are charged by undead cavalry and chariots. As the horse archers stand and shoot at their foes, a unit of raised dead is summoned, blocking the horse archers retreat, whilst a second unit of raised dead assault the bears. In combat, the bears lose three units, but the war wagons easily repel the undead advance. The horse archers have also taken heavy damage, but the undead cavalry assault is blunted. 
The Kislevite Forlorn Hope continues its advance at the centre of the board. On their right, Vengeful Kislevite Cavalry Units assault the undead. Whilst on their left, the Kislevite Infantry make a cautious advance. The battle lines are now within striking distance of each other. The Kislevites successfully break up the Undead Cavalry Brigades, but are unable to destroy them. The Undead order a Sphinx to go and hold the extreme right flank to prevent Kislevite Cavalry sneaking by. In the centre, the Undead send a Bone Giant and Cavalry unit to attack the Forlorn Hope. Whilst on their left, the Undead continue to attack the Kislevite units. In the centre, the coordinated Undead firing line destroys two unengaged units from the Forlorn Hope. Some raised dead are also summoned to attack the Kislevites. On the Undead left, more dead are raised into combat, finishing off the remaining Kislevite light cavalry units. The remaining Undead cavalry then fall back, leaving their raised dead units to hold the line. The Kislevites launch a counter-attack, sending their infantry on their right to attack the raised dead. Elsewhere, the Kislevites generally hold position, although some infantry charge forward to attack the raised dead in the centre. A freeze spell brings down the undead bone giant this turn, whilst light cavalry move up on their left to challenge the Sphinx. A no-man's land has now developed in the centre battlefield. While undead flyers monitor the Kislevite lines, the bulk of the Kislevite infantry retain defended position on their hill. In order to win, the Kislevites will have to commit their infantry reserve, which is currently under bombardment from the undead artillery. On their right, the Kislevites destroy all the raised dead, but fail to destroy the cavalry. On their left, Kislevite horse archers drive off the Sphinx, wounding it in the process. In the centre, the raised dead are destroyed by Kislevite infantry, who fall back in good order. The threat of undead flyers is enough to prevent the Kislevites from advancing further forward this turn. The Coven of Kislevite Shaman plots their next move to remove the undead artillery. The initial undead assault has been driven off, but the Kislevites have lost many lives in doing so. Undead cavalry and flyers move past the war wagons to assault Kislev infantry. A bone giant spots Kislev cavalry trying to sneak past his position on the high ground. The monster leaps down from his vantage point to attack the Kislevites whilst a sphinx blocks their retreat. The undead artillery continue to drive back Kislevite infantry in the centre. On their right, undead units attempt to reorganise and prevent the Kislevites' light cavalry sneaking through. Kislevite infantry units are brought down by the undead flyers and cavalry, whilst the undead monsters finish off another unit. The last stand of bears charges recklessly into the undead cavalry this turn. Kislevite Light Cavalry advance at the centre, but cannot charge their enemy. The Kislevite commanders cannot encourage their troops to advance into no man's land. In combat, all the remaining Kislevite infantry on the right flank is killed off. Only the war wagons remain on the Kislev right to hold back the undead tide. In an attempt to remove the war wagons, undead monsters charge home. 
However, due to their defended status and defensive fire, the war wagons easily see off the Bone Giant and the Sphinx. The undead monsters are forced to fall back and seek easier prey elsewhere. This turn, the Kislevite Shaman enact their plan, and with three successful free spells, remove all three undead Skullchucker catapults. Without their long-range artillery, the undead are forced to order a general advance in the center. On their left, undead monsters go hunting Kislevite cavalry, whilst the undead cavalry falls back. On the right flank, carrion charge into horse archers, whilst raised dead are summoned behind. This spells doom for the horse archers who are wiped out. On the left, despite more raised dead adding to the bone giant's combat, he is forced back by the Kislevite cavalry. The winged lancers immediately countercharge the bone giant and raise the dead, whilst fire from the war wagons wounds the nearby sphinx. The winged lancers destroy their opponents in combat and advance into the sphinx, killing it as well. Whilst the Kislevites have endured so far, they are very close to breaking. Will they survive another turn? The undead now order an all-out assault on the Kislevite lines. Cavalry, chariots and monsters charge the Kislevite lines around the central hill. In the centre left, cavalry supported by the zombie dragon overrun the Kislevite halberdiers. More dead are raised into the combat and the cavalry overrun into the ogres, but the brutes hold them back. Elsewhere, Kislev horse archers manage to drive off the carrion but undead chariots wipe out a unit of archers on the hill. And with this final action, the Kislevite army is broken and is forced to retreat.